All right, let's get into it. Michelle Obama, the light we carry. Y'all, okay. There are so many gems in this book. Michelle Obama decided to write this book when we were in the midst of a global pandemic, the coronavirus. Y'all remember, right? This book is filled with so many gems and life lessons. She's very candid. I'm not sure if you listened or read Becoming her first book. She's very candid. She's open about her life and her experiences in this book and and Becoming. So before I listened to this book, I listened to the audio. I love the audio when the author is speaking because you get the emphasis on the words. You hear the inflections, the sounds in their voices when you listen to an audio book. So as I was listening to this book, well, let me back up. So Netflix has a interview, The Light We Carry. So as soon as it came out, I watched it. Oprah was moderating this and Michelle Obama is talking about this book. So I saw that prior to reading or listening to the book. And it was fantastic. So before I read the book, listened to the book, I heard about the kitchen table. I heard about Malia and Sasha's coasters. I heard about the relationship with uh, her husband, former President Barack Obama, and so much more. So I would suggest And you can do it how you want to do it. But I liked watching that and then going back to listen to the book and put the pieces together of what they were talking about in its totality. But I'll just give you a hint because I don't want to spoil it for you. So if we're talking about the kitchen table, that's her set of friendships. And she says she teaches her daughters that they cannot do this alone. And she talks about the importance of friendship. And how each of your friends can give you something that the others can't and you can do the same. And just having that kitchen table of friends is great. And also her voice is pretty melodic. So it's a great listen. And here is the book as well. There are so many parts of this book that jump out at me and I'm going to put in my back pocket to refer back to. But I wanted to share just something with you. And I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read the book or listened to the book. All right, so let me share this. This is from the last chapter, Going High. Y'all know her famous, when they go low, we go high. And she talks about how people always ask her, how do we go high in spite of this? So when this happens or that happens, do we really go high? How do we not stay low and why? So I want to read this. I want to be clear that this is a process and not always a quick one. It can take time and patience. It's okay to sit and stew for a while, to live inside the agitation caused by injustice or fear or grief or to express your pain. It's okay to grant yourself space to recover or heal. For me, going high usually involves taking a pause before I reset. It's a form of self-control, a line laid between our best and our worst impulses. Going high is about resisting the temptation to participate in shallow theory, coercion, contempt, instead figuring out how to respond with a clear voice to whatever is shallow and corrosive around you. Whoo! Now this, listen. It's what happens when you take a reaction and mature it into a response. Let's just pause on that for a moment. It's what happens when you take a reaction and mature it into a response. Meaning, don't just react. Think about your mature response. Okay, then it goes. Because here's the thing. I say that all the time too. (laughs) Emotions are not plans. They don't solve problems or right any wrongs. You can feel them. You will feel them inevitably. But be careful about letting them guide you. 
Rage can be a dirty windshield. Hurt is like a broken steering wheel. Disappointment will only ride sulking and unhelpful in the back seat. Woo! All right. If you don't do something constructive with them, they'll take you straight into a ditch. My power has always hinged on my ability to keep myself out of the ditch. Y'all, that right there will help you with your emotional intelligence. Something as powerful as that. Did you hear what she said? Whether you go get the physical copy of this book, Michelle Obama, The Light We Carry, or listen to the audio version of this book, you will have a lot to take away and to put it in your back pocket. Even as a life coach of 20 plus years, I learned and relearned some things that were in this book. And I'll be able to carry them with me even at 52 years old. These are the kind of books that I like to read. I love autobiographies and I love self-empowerment books. Y'all know I write them as well. But to hear some of the stories, and she just doesn't talk about herself in this book. She talks about people along the way who have created spaces for her to even learn from. Michelle Obama talks about her mom. She talks about her assistant. She talks about the people who have grown her as well. All right, this is Kendall and East for reviews and news. So I give this 10 out of 10. I might listen again. Read or listen and let me know what you think. This is Kendall and East for reviews and news. God bless y'all. Peace. Oh, oh, oh. In the comments, let me know if you have read this book or if you listen, let me know if you've done either and let me know what you think. And also drop in a comment your favorite part of the book. I shared one of mine with you. All right, y'all. I'm gone. Peace.